please welcome Gary Weber. The stopping thought and stopping time. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the IT help we got there for the floor. Appreciate that. Uh, as uh, so was lucidly explained, I'm talking about no thoughts, no time. You can see my name there. Um, my teacher, as Hal mentioned, is this guy. He's probably the sage of the 20th century. Uh, what he said about time was this. You can read it faster than I can read it to you. And the idea was that if you can somehow get out of your mind, get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> I get out of the way. You can read the, you can read the slides. I'll be quiet. <laughs> um, many of us in this room spent a long time meditating. Uh, I spent a lot of time with the Zen people, the yoga people, the Advaitists. Uh, Ramana's a guy that really brought it home for me. And after working for a long, long time, what happened to me surprisingly, uh, I was very surprised by it, it was this. After 20,000 hours of meditation, uh, my thoughts just abruptly stopped. Uh, I should have expected this. I wasn't. In 20,000 hours, you get all kinds of experiences. We've all been through many experiences. But this was a big surprise. Uh, I had a, a big uh, industrial job at the time, a thousand people, five research labs, a uh, quarter billion dollar budget, and I had no thoughts. And so it was like, a little feeling came up, now you've done it. <laughs> and I went to work, and uh, nothing happened. Everybody saw me as I was before, which may say something about corporate management, but, but I functioned perfectly, even better because there wasn't that bandwidth interfering with what was going on. Everything that happened was very clear and present. So other than for these few things down here we can talk about if you're curious, uh, my days are like this. Uh, it's over, over 90 most of the time, uh, 90, 95. You can't really count it accurately. The surprise me was that you could actually speak and act even in a very complicated corporate environment. I did many jobs post this, uh, vice chair of the board of the regional medical center, I worked at the university, I was vice president of research with no thoughts, which again, it says something about university administration. But I also lost this sense of personal time we talked about. This losing thoughts shouldn't have been a big surprise to me. I'd read this many books at least, but uh, it completely shocked me. It was not what I expected. It just completely stopped, like a page had turned. It wasn't a big explosion, no hyperorgasmic feeling, no flooding light. It just was there, and then it turned over, and it stopped. And all these guys, who are all the ones I studied, read, uh, worked in their stuff, uh, said the same thing. It's in the Gita. So Patanjali's Yoga Sutras, it's every place. I uh, spent a lot of time in Zen. Uh, the iconic Zen figure said exactly the same thing. So it shouldn't have been a surprise at all that thoughts stopped. That's, they said, duh, what'd you expect? Uh, which really led to a problem of how do we have a, uh, a neuroanatomical model for this thing? We have a default mode network, which we've, the last 10 years has come on the scene. What it is when you're uh, not tasking, she's not tasking right now, uh, most of us go into our default mode network, and that's usually a big narrative about he said, she said, I said, I can't believe uh, what's going to happen to me. If not that, then you're over here tasking. And the old model used to be old being 12 years ago, that uh, when you weren't active, the brain just was asleep, wasn't doing anything. Uh, when you were active, it got active. Well, that's not not the case. We get more and more sophisticated in our cognitive neuroscience, we find that in fact it's very active on both sides. It's exactly how it's active is what perceives to us to be inactive is not, from the brain standpoint, inactivity at all. There's some really good uh, research out as I started digging into this default mode network and how I could possibly have this base state of no thoughts, why it has just stopped like it did. This is some great work out of Harvard uh, mid last year probably the classic right now on a default mode network. And what the Harvard folks came up with was, was this, and I'll have to get in the way a little bit here, but um, this is the key thing. Uh, they found there were 11 centers through which selfing occurs. When you're in narrative, you're selfing, selfing, selfing all the time. Almost nothing else is in there. If you watch your thoughts from Maharshi type style, you will see they're almost all I, me, my, all the bad ones 
are Aimeemais. These are the 11 centers that the Aimeemai takes place through. These two here, you'll hear a lot more about later, the PCC and the medial prefrontal cortex. It's like in here, the center line, and in here, the center line. Uh, here you can see the yellow ones here and there. That's where they are. That's medial plane right through the brain here. That's where they are front and back. This side, the blue side over here, uh, are less important. But that side is responsible for me and not me. Me and the computer, me and you. Uh, that's the me and other side. This blue side in cooperation with these two. This side over here is the me in time. Me present versus me future, me past, past projected to the future. So you've got two discrete networks, Harvard guys found out. Uh, these are the two main nodes. The strength of these lines indicates how strongly they're correlated to each other. But these are the two drivers of the bus. Knowing that, it's like, okay, well, how does this explain this not having thought thing? Okay, we've got the default mode network. We know how it's laid out. We know where the 11 self selfing centers are. There's some good work done. A lot of work's been done in mindfulness meditation. Uh, this was some uh, Toronto work in 2007, and they looked at, okay, when we meditate, uh, what happens neuroanatomically, cognitive neuroscientifically? And what you get here are our old friends, PCC, the medial prefrontal cortex. This is the narrative nodes, the two we saw in the Harvard study, the same ones they saw in the Toronto study. Those two centers, when you're narrating, that's what's going on. When you're meditating, it was interesting, after only two months, 45 minutes a day, two months, the brain during meditation changed over here to the right-hand side. <clears throat> we shut down that central network. We get down here, lateral prefrontal cortex, posterior parietal cortex, and right insula. So we moved from here to here, two months during meditation. Raised the obvious question, well, well how did it get to be permanent? It didn't do it in, in two months. How long does it take? So, oh, here's another quick look. Uh, this, this just cuts vertical slices through each one of those centers, and these black bars are the meditators. The gray bars are the non-meditators. And you can see uh, here, the meditators have shut down this part, and they've driven it to this side. That's the two-month thing. 